What is this thing? K truck? Like that's a Honda. Oh. We're gonna do a little quick mini truck check because yeah. <laughs> there's this thing. It's got some good all-terrain tires, right-hand drive, has all the racks. Probably gets, I don't know, it probably goes to max speed of 35 mile an hour when it's loaded up like this. It won't go fast, but you'll be very stylish. Good morning, Pink Bike. I'm Dario here at the 2024 Sea Otter Classic. I've got this new Bond villain scar, courtesy of the man-sized otter I had to fight to the death in order to earn my media pass. We are gonna be wandering around looking for all the coolest new tech bits. We'll be finding some fun little odds and ends for you. We're gonna start today off with a few new releases, some interesting tech items. We're gonna dig into those right now at the DT Swiss booth. We are here at the DT Swiss booth talking about the new Ratchet DEG hubs. So this is a standard DT Swiss 240 hub, but built around a new, much larger Ratchet ring. Uh, the point of this new Ratchet ring is to get higher engagement, you know, lower degrees of slop in the system essentially. It's got 90 teeth as opposed to the traditional 36. Um, in order to package those 90 teeth, they made the Ratchet ring much bigger and all those teeth get you four degrees of engagement. So you've got a, like a real tight hub, very, very little slop between engagement points. Um, I've been riding one of these for about six months and the durability has been exactly the same as other DT products that I'm used to. Um, you do notice the higher engagement. I'm not dogmatic about having like the highest engagement hubs, but for those who are, I think this is gonna be a really nice product. Um, the other upside to the very large ratchet ring is you can actually punch out the drive side bearing without having to remove the drive ring. Historically on DT hubs, that was like the one frustrating thing in service is you had to have a special tool to screw that bit out. So now you can just use a straight, straight punch, um, get all the bearings out. The rest of it is as easy to service as any other DT product. Um, unlike the somewhat new EXP hubs, this uses two springs on both sides. So it'll have less of the like funky engagement problems that happened with some of those early EXB hubs. All right, up next we have the new Wild Enduro tires from Michelin. Uh, this is a fully revamped lineup for them. They've got a whole new lineup of downhill Enduro and e-bike tires, but today I'm just focusing on the Wild Enduro MS. That is their soft conditions tire and one that I've been riding for the past month or so. So far, digging it. We've had pretty mixed spring conditions back home in Bellingham, and it seems to be a good tire to fit that bill. As you can see, it's got super widely spaced knobs. The rubber compound is Michelin's Magi X, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, it's extremely soft. Like the rebound is really, really slow. It's a gummy rubber. Um, I've also found because of that, the wear rate is pretty quick on these tires, but they do grip really nicely. Um, Kind of like the one shortcoming I've noticed is in really cold conditions, it gets kind of hard and just loses a bit of grip. But for the most part, it's holding up really well. Um, these come in 29 inch and 27.5. They only come in one casing option and that's like a dual 55 TPI, kind of like a something between an enduro and downhill casing. They're not very heavy. Uh, I think mine measured at around 1200 grams. So. Overall, a really good tire for like your all around enduro type of bike. Additionally, here at the Michelin booth, we have the brand new, just out today, downhill lineup. We have the DH22 and the DH16. Uh, the DH22 is gonna look quite familiar to the wild enduro. The tread pattern is essentially the same, but the compound is slightly stickier and it has a much burlier downhill casing. The DH16 is similar to a, another different wild enduro tire, but again with a stickier compound and the downhill casing. Um, update from the prior downhill tires, these are now a folding bead as opposed to a wire bead. They've reduced the weight pretty significantly and they've redesigned the tires to roll a bit faster. Uh, Matt Beer reviewed the prior lineup a couple of years ago, liked them quite a bit, but did kind of comment on the weight and the rolling speed of them. So those are welcome changes. Um, based on my experience so far with this tread pattern, it does work really nicely. And I think it'll be a solid downhill tire. Looking forward to riding them. We're here at Cascade Components. We've got this shiny, shiny piece of metal. 
blinded myself with it. Uh, this is a direct replacement for the tr SRAM transmission lower cage. Um, you're going to replace those two outer plates with this singular John. Uh, clearly oversized pulleys uses all the same geometry as the existing transmission stuff. And the idea behind it is it's a little bit stronger, more impact resistant, and allegedly easier to shift because of the gigantic pulleys. I'm gonna get one of these in for test and I'm curious to see how it fares. Um, I've got a GX transmission derailleur I've been beating the crap out of for almost a year now. And we'll see if this improves things, if it lasts just as well. and. We'll get back to you on that. No prizes for guessing which booth I'm standing outside of right now. But what I have is the new Maxxis Aspen ST tire right here on this XC Speed Machine. You've probably seen this tire if you've been following cross country racing for the last couple of seasons. Nino Scherter has racked up some victories on it. Super low profile. And for the first time ever, Maxxis is having it available in their 170 TPI or threads per inch casing. Basically, super supple casing, just designed to really contour to the ground, give you as much grip as possible with as little tread as possible, which equates to very fast rolling speed. I've been actually getting a few rides in these at home and they're very impressive. Very fast as you'd expect, but more predictable also. Um, there's two versions, like I mentioned, the 170 TPI version, and there's also a 120 TPI version. Costs a little bit less, weighs a little bit more, so it kind of depends on what you're after. Um, available in stores now. The fancy team spec ones are limited edition, and then the 120 TPI, 120 TPI will be in the lineup for the foreseeable future. All right, I'm here in the race face booth with the new Era chain ring. This thing's pretty interesting because it uses an aluminum centerpiece, carbon middle, and then steel outer rings. So basically the idea is that you can get the weight of a typical aluminum chain ring, but the longevity durability of a steel chain ring. Um, this weighs in at 83 grams, which is only one gram heavier than race faces uh, typical aluminum ring, but it's supposed to last five times longer. So could be worth it for people that want to save weight, but also have durability. It is pretty expensive, so you're going to pay more because of that construction, but it's pretty unique. Um, there's nothing really like it on the market that I can think of. And the inspiration for this came from the edge of a ski. So if you've ever seen the way the ski edge works, the metal part is kind of serrated into the base material. And that's how this steel outer um, sits into the, into the carbon piece there. It's available for all 11 and 12 speed drivetrains. There's different configurations. They make a direct mount wide one that goes with a 55 millimeter chain line and another one for the 52 millimeter chain line. So again, a bit pricey, uh, not for everybody, but the durability and weight balance that they've achieved, kind of cool to check out. We're here at the Hara booth and they have two brand new full suspension bikes that are on the way. There's the Daily and the Greer. Those are named after the local riding areas where they're developed. The Daily is the shorter travel option, 140 millimeters of rear travel, 150 millimeter fork. And then you have the Greer, the bigger, longer travel um, enduro option. And that's mullet with a 160 millimeters of rear travel, and 170 millimeter fork. Um, geometry on that, pretty modern, 485 millimeter reach for size large, 435 chain stays, and the head angle right around 64 degrees, like 63.8. So a little shorter back end, a little longer front, but just designed for enduro riding. Initially, they're just gonna be available in aluminum only. That'll be around July. And then later on, they do have plans for carbon options in both models. That's a wrap from our first round of coverage from the Sea Otter Classic. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the things that we find here in sunny California. Thanks for watching.